Zach Sang and the gang. Zach Sang and the gang right now in the studio. Nick Jonas. What's up? Dude, how are you? Feeling good, man. Life is good for you, man. It It is. It feels really good at the moment. I'm having a lot of fun. Walk me through your day today. What was a day in Nick Jonas's life like today? Today, specifically, was a lot of radio stuff. Okay. So stopping to different people, doing some acoustic songs, talking. Uh, later today, we got Fashion Rocks. Very cool. Uh, which will be fun. And uh, this whole week is kind of crazy. Seth Meyers. Um, we're doing the Today Show. Bunch Jeez. of stuff happening. Now, did you miss doing these radio interviews and doing this type of press? Because... You kind of not that you slowed down at all, but you like when was the last time you went and you had to do real radio promotion for a single? It's, it's been, been a little it's bit. Been a while. Yeah. yeah, a long time. Um, it feels really good to be back and doing, it, especially with a song like "Jealous" that uh, I feel like radio is already starting to really embrace and fans are like in. It's just a good moment. When I first heard "Jealous," I was taken back because it's such a completely different sound. Like, if you go back and, you know, I've been a Jonas Brothers fan for a while, and you, you go back to, like, your first stuff, you know? Yeah. All the way back to, like, oh, I don't, oh my God, what, what are you talking about? Like, 2009, 2008, like, a long time ago. Yeah. The progress and the changes you've made in your sound to right now, astonishing. Like, Thanks, it's man. it's a completely different thing. Like, you're a completely different artist than you were before. It's funny, because for everybody else, I feel like it is that. Like, it's like a, a new discovery of the, the new deal, but... For me, I've kind of been living with it for a couple of years now, yeah. sort of becoming this uh, new version of myself with you know different influences and, and a different approach vocally. That um, you know, it, it's like everyone's kind of catching up to something that I was already sort of on, but it feels really good and just pumped to have new music out, man. Now, when people go and listen, do you want people to go in and kind of clear their head? Would you rather have somebody kind of feel like they've discovered a new artist? Rather than listening yeah. to Nick from the Jonas Brothers. I'm definitely thinking about it like I'm a new artist. Yeah. You know, that's that's the vibe for it. Especially even with the setup. It's like kind of like starting over in a lot of ways. Um, really got to be creative with the promotion plan and, and just getting people aware of what I'm doing and what's happening. And now are you using your vast knowledge? Because the one thing that, you know, I always like to point out, and whenever, you know, I talk to people about you or whatever, I feel like people forget the fact that you really are a genius. Like, I wow. remember sitting down with you for the first time. I mean, you have a great business sense, and musically, I mean, you are leaps and bounds above so many people. Thanks, man. That's are, very kind. It, it's true. It, this it, is such, like, a, an encouraging interview. It oh, makes so, me feel great, man. So far. I mean, we still have, like, 15 minutes still have 15 minutes, minutes left, yeah. than just, like... Then, then I'll go in on yeah, it. No, yeah, no, yeah. No. But seriously, I mean, I feel like, have you used the knowledge that you've learned over the past, you know, decade, really, to kind of help kind of jumpstart this? Like, you know so much more now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I've had a lot of life experience. Like when I say it's like being a new artist, um, I'm still taking, you know, the experiences I've had with me and, and, and taking those and learning from that and just trying to be the best version of myself, uh, you know, and, and to be, be the most effective. Why did you feel that it was right now to go and release solo stuff? You know, I had a lot going on after the brothers sort of closed our chapter last year i took yeah. some time to sort of figure out what i wanted to do so at that moment i made acting a priority and finding yeah. a project that i could lose myself in and just really get into in a script that was great and the show kingdom came along yeah uh, i had to work really hard to get the role because there were some uh other really talented actors um up for the role and and i proved myself got the job and and then recorded the record while i was shooting the show so with the show and the music like it was all kind of happening at once and mm -hmm. it just felt like a good moment to kind of capitalize on now how personal is this record for you i mean just listening to the lyrics and jealous i mean they scream personal like they, they i feel like it's a, like a story straight out of your life yeah it is you know i i've in the past with the brothers and stuff the songwriting i did when it was really personal usually got kind of emotional and, yeah and sort of on that side whereas this i wanted to flip it and be like let me tell my real stories um, have this really come from me, but but give it uh, a vibe that people can either dance to or or put on a mix and it feel good. Like, you know, just one of those records that um, you just vibe with, and that's kind of where it came from. And in between, obviously, doing, you know, Jonas Brothers stuff, and now you're writing for other artists. Like, you are working with other artists. You're st Are you still grooming people? I know you're uh, working with some of the artists that your dad works with. Are you still doing that, or is it just you right yeah. now? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely uh, still doing that. I, I have kind of taken some time to just focus on my stuff as well and make sure that I'm, that I'm giving that all the attention it needs and, and pushing myself in that way. Um, but there are uh, a few projects that I'm working on and, yeah. and 
you know, some songs I'm writing for other people. I feel like you don't stop. Like when Demi called in, I think was it last week or the week before? She called in, and we literally did we did we did a 20 minute commercial for your new music. I mean, you that's ha- awesome. You have support from people on this. Demi's the best. She's you know she and I have been great friends for a long time, and I just came from actually getting her tour up and running. I'm the musical director and creative director for the tour. So that job on top of all that I'm doing, um, but she's the best, and, and I played her the music early so that she could get behind it. She and, loves it. Yeah, she's awesome. Oh, my God, she was obsessed with it. Does that does that make you feel good to have somebody like Demi in your corner? For sure. Yeah, I mean, any support from any of your peers is always amazing. Yeah. We, we work so hard, uh, you know, on the music we make as artists, and, and um, everyone would be lying if they said that when they walk into an award show or something, if someone doesn't come up with them and say, hey, dude, love your song, or whatever yeah. it is feels really good you know and and, and um, being respected and, and looked at by your peers is always a nice feeling how crazy is it that you're respected by some legends some icons I mean you perform with some crazy people over the years I mean yeah it's been it's been pretty cool man I, I feel like all those experiences I have were all great and kind of set me up for this next chapter too in a lot of ways you know and, and to be mentally prepared for that does it hurt sometimes when you think about, you know, having to close that chapter with the Jonas Brothers? Does it kind of suck sometimes? Uh, yeah, sometimes. And, you know, but at the end of the day, it's all for the best and it worked out for all of us. You know, I think we we definitely sort of approach it now with um, the understanding that we all get to do what we love. Yeah. And whether or not that's together, it's the same thing. The, the goal is that. We're all just happy and healthy and, and doing what we love. Which is the case. I mean, everybody's ki- killing it in their own ways. Yeah, Kevin is doing amazing things in Jersey with some different business developments and stuff, and he's got a baby, which is awesome. And, yeah, and how's Joe's your baby? keeping busy. Um, baby's great. She's uh, she's amazing. I went and saw her pretty recently, about a week ago, and um, she's the sweetest. She looks adorable. Yeah, she is. Wow, you got you guys have a good life. You guys have been killing it for a while. That's <laughs> Thanks, insane. Man. Do you see yourself doing this for like ever? Do you plan um, on stopping ever? I I don't want to. Yeah. You know, I, I genuinely love what I do and feel really blessed to get to do it. So hopefully it keeps rolling. I think it will. This new chapter is crazy. Thanks, man. It's such a different sound, man. What do you want people to, like, what do you want the reaction to be when the first, like, somebody hears the record for the first time? Um, I want them to go, who is it? I want, I, like, not believe that it's actually me, you know. And, and um, you know, I think that that has been the reaction for a lot of people. Yeah. It's, it's just so surprised that it's me and... and uh, that I'm taking this step musically, and uh, I'd love to see the record do well too. You know, it's it's kind of incredible to have a song on the radio, um, no matter what stage in your career you're in. Just people playing the music and it being out there is a great feeling. And I told you before because the one thing that the Genesis Brothers had, I mean, you you guys always got radio play, but I feel like a number one smash, you know, never happened really. I mean, yeah. you had great singles, but it never went number one. It never did. Now, we, we didn't even have like a top 10 on the radio, so it would be cool to, to get up there. This could be it. This. I hope so. That's awesome. That would be amazing. It would make my whole life do you, awesome. Do you still dream about things even after accomplishing so much? Do you still have dreams and aspirations like on how to grow? Of course, yeah. I mean, radio embracing a yeah. song that I did was one of them. Um, but also... You know, I feel like my biggest dream and aspiration is just to uh, be around people that inspire me and yeah. continue to push me and, and, and become better every day. You know, I, I, I've i learned a lot about music and about the way this business works and everything else and the acting side of things, too. But um, there's always room to grow. Now, who do you surround yourself with to have that happen? Uh, my new label home, okay. Island, is amazing and, and partnering with the Republic side as well. Good people. Really good people. and genius people they just they know what they're doing and it's nice to be around uh such professionals and people that believe in what i'm doing as well how about personally like how's your friends do you do you surround um, yourself with friends what do you do what, i do yeah do i work it? i work with some of my friends too which is nice okay the management team and uh, outside of that you know i i keep it pretty tight i've got like three or four people that i i hang out with and and you know, it's. I feel like it's better to have friends you're really close with, a small group that you're really yeah. close with, than tons of friends that you don't really know that well. Right? I feel like it's scary. Yeah, and it's I'm go- overwhelming. And I'm going to that now. First, you know, the, what hit on, what resonated with me was you said you work with some friends. Mm-hmm. I work with some friends too. Unneeded yeah. drama, more drama than usual. What with the friends I work with? Yeah. No, we- I have a no drama policy. T- tell me about it, because I it's need just, to adopt it. It's this. just no drama, All, zero. Life is too short, and there's too much to do to have to deal with unnecessary shit. How do you eliminate it from your life? How do you get um, rid of the drama? 
I just don't entertain it. I just if if it starts to happen, I just put it to the side and say work work yourself out. I've got more important <laughs> things to do. Now, is that something that has your girlfriend adopted that too? Uh, yeah, Everybody? she's she's the same way. She's even more intense than I am with the no drama. Really? Yeah, she's it's pretty crazy. It's awesome. That's really great. That's yeah. rare. She, it is, no, it's very rare. She's beautiful and she doesn't like drama. I know. Oh my I, god. Jackpot. Yeah, you're lucky, man. Yeah. So lucky. So album, you got a date yet? Album comes out November 11th, self-titled, okay. which is cool for me. Um, and dude, some really cool collaborations. Demi's on the record. Angel Hayes is on the track. I wrote with a, Mike Posner a bunch. And, dude. Um, some really good writers and producers, and it was just a great process. Let's talk Mike Posner. Mm-hmm. I love him. He loves yeah, he's me. the man. He's incredible. His new stuff's incredible. He's been playing me some of it on the down low. So good. When is he it's, releasing pages? I've been waiting literally, Nick, for maybe eight months. Yeah, he is. I think he's coming with it soon. We'll see. I, he hasn't given me the full plan, but he's he's a genius and, and just a good dude. And loved writing with him um, on the record. The nicest dude in the world. Yeah, what so a, nice. He's Speak of drama free, dude, I think that dude knows what drama is. He doesn't. He, it's very special. It's awesome. What did you do with him? Is he just producing or no? Is he he, he, uh, he wrote a song with me called Numb, the one that Angel Hayes featured on. Cool. And then on the bonus edition of the record, there's a song that he and I wrote together that he features on. So yeah, it's 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 cool. And we've hung out a few times. I did a bunch of showcases out in L.A. and it was a really nice kind of party vibe. And Sweet. after I played, he got up with the acoustic guitar and. After everyone was already drunk and stuff, and he played a few <laughs> songs. It was very fun. He's really good. Yeah, he's great. Wait, hold on. So, Lauren told me about, you mentioned drunk, and I thought, what a better segue. You have you have a drink that you make? I do, yeah. What is it called? It's called the Bombay Dream. What is this drink? So, we were on tour in South America. Okay. And um, I just started training uh, for this film that I was doing where uh, I wanted to be in good shape. And so... Wanted to come up with a drink that tasted good that wasn't beer because okay. I like beer and, and wine, but I wanted something that would be a little bit less calories or something. So I, I walked up to the bar and I was like, look, I like gin, club soda, uh, a splash, pineapple, and two limes. Just Ooh. like went out on a limb and just ordered that. And he was like, all right. And I tried it. It was amazing. And then everyone on the tour started drinking these things. And by the time we started the tour the end okay. we travel all around south america people started to pick up on the name like we walk up to a bar and be like hey can i get a bombay dream <laughs> and they'd be like sure and they'd make it you started a drink started a drink and then i just did a thing with l magazine where i like showed them a drink and we had a few and it was really fun so now it's pretty famous see I i'm feel, very proud i feel like you're that kind of guy like even when it comes down to like a drink, drink or, inventing kind of guy well i feel like anything you do like everything you do you go like 100 percent. yeah like you you see it through Except I kind of screwed myself. I'm not making any money off of this no, Bombay Dream to. situation. You need to do you like got, a you got to be stuff. 25 to have an alcohol endorsement. So oh, I'm not quite there yet. You're, you're not far. A couple of years. What, yeah. did, what did you do for your 21st? I was in Vegas. Ooh, that's yeah, good. Yeah, it was fun. Do you remember any of it? I remember all of it, actually. Is that disappointing? Uh, no, I was with a lot of friends. So, like, the thing is, I, it, it was so much kind of, like, hanging out yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. that... I didn't want to get so far there that I didn't yes. like I, I really want to enjoy it with my friends. Yeah. And it was I, a good experience. I've gone back a few times and not remembered those trips that are, well. So. Are you a club guy or are you a lounge guy? Not really. I mean, I, I know how to, like, go to a club and have a good time yeah. and, like, make a joke of it. Okay. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. It's like, you know, I, I do the ridiculous dancing, like, the stuff I just see people doing when they're being really serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, with their, their like, uh, wife beater t-shirts on <laughs> yeah, and, like, flat brim hats. Yeah. <laughs> And I just do that just for fun, uh, and I, I, you know, go full out. But uh, no, I prefer like, for me, like a cigar lounge is kind of my jam. Oh, you smoke cigars? I do. Yeah. I, I I've never been able to get into that. I mean, yeah, I feel it's like not for everybody. Yeah, I feel like I'm too womanly. You know, <laughs> I feel like it takes like it's a real man to do a cigar. I don't think you're too womanly. I, Thank you, know, you. That was really. Nice. I know a lot of women that love cigars. <laughs> okay. Good. So. We went yeah. to a club on Friday. We did, um, this is easily the highlight of our, our careers, easy. We went to this down in Atlantic City. We did Cougars and Cubs ball at Boogie Nights at the Tropicana. What it is is, like, it's a 70s club, and they made it straight out of the 70s. So it's, like, they have a lit-up dance floor, and it's raised. But is raised it Cougars? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then Young Guys. Yeah. I was the ultimate Cougar, wow. and Dan was the Cougar of the Month. I mean, I'm just saying. Well, you were the Cub. Oh, cub, cub, cub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not a cougar. Amazing. Not a four-year-old woman. Oh, it was a good time. That's exciting. Oh, my God, yeah. 
That see that that's a fun time for me. Dancing, it's not terrible. It's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, that's cool, man. Good for you. Thank you. That was Atlantic City. Interesting. It's sad now. It's it really is a de- bit. it's very depressing. We're on, um, we're on the my brother was telling me, Kevin was telling me because he uh he likes to play cards. You okay. Know? And so he was like telling me about Atlantic City and giving me all the updates and just saying that they're struggling a little bit, which is a bummer because I think Sandy had a lot to do with that. Oh my god, yeah. So, you know and you're as a like, East Coaster, it's like it's tough for me to see that happening, but it's all good. Maybe it'll turn a corner. Yeah, you are a New Jersey dude. I am. How often do you go home? I I I don't I don't call New Jersey home necessarily. Like, okay. I grew up there. I moved out when I was about 14, 15 years old. Yeah. And then Kevin moved back, but I haven't lived there or had a place to go back there and call home. But right. I lived here in New York City for two years, and you, this is still home to me. I, I love it. It's great. Yeah, I, I miss it a lot. I'm in L.A. now full time. Very cool. Nick Jonas, man. Thank you yeah. so much for hanging out. Dude, thanks for having me. It was good to catch up. Of course, always.